Okay, so we need to look at how to handle these gas law problems in the, sen in the bigger sense of things, where um, instead of plugging and chugging numbers, which is generally fairly easy to take numbers and set them into an equation and then calculate on a calculator, what I want to look at is how do you even know which equations to use for these different kinds of problems? That tends to be the thornier issue. Rearranging an equation doesn't tend to trip as many people up, and plugging numbers into it and solving on a calculator, do, t people tend to do fairly well on that. Um, issues tend to come up with even choosing the correct equation in the first place. So in looking at this, I want to just talk about what equation would you use to solve this. And what I'll do is I will choose an equation, explain why I chose the equation, and then maybe even uh, point out which variables should be solved for. But I'm not going to go through the, at this point, I'm not going to plug numbers in and solve it. If you want to, highly encourage, the answers are here for a reason. Okay, you can pause this video anytime and work ahead of me and then let it play and see if you're right. So, um, to begin with, I want to say that these gas questions, the ones you'll see on any quizzes or tests also, fall into two categories. Some of these questions feature one or more of the conditions changing. Uh, let me use, uh, this is an example right here. I think this should work just fine. This is a volume, and here it talks about uh, asking for a new volume. So volume changes. Here's a pressure, and then it talks about standard pressure, which is atmospheric pressure, which is 101.3 kilopascal. So pressure changes. Like, okay, so that's what I mean by changing, as in one or more conditions changes. Same thing is true in many of the rest of these, like the final volume. Calculate the volume at STP if you got like a volume over here. Calculate a different new volume. So these th many of these involve changing conditions, whereas others, and uh, oh, let me have a quick look. Which ones might not involve changing conditions would require you to use a different set of gas laws. Uh, let's see, like uh, uh, here we go. Here's one. Okay, look at this one here. It doesn't say anything about the moles changing or the liters changing or the pressure changing or the temperature changing. So this is one where the conditions are not changing, where none of the conditions are changing. So you either have one or more changing conditions or no changing conditions. If you have no changing conditions at all, then the gas law you will use is the only one that's actually given to you on the exam, which you don't I guess theoretically have to memorize. It's the ideal gas law. PV equals NRT. That is really the mother of all the other gas equations, including the ones you'd use for all the rest of these, and they can all be derived from this. But that being said, it's good to know them and have them handy because it allows you to do this quicker on an exam. And that is important to finish this in time and not run out of time because you're trying to do a bunch of um, long, long steps. Now, Here's the thing, if for a calculation such as this one, where you are going to have uh, one or two or more conditions changing, that means you're going to have a P1, P2, or a V1, V2, or a T1, T2, or something like that. And you need to choose the correct equation that has the same changing variables as what's presented here. Let me give you the example with this first one. Because it's changing, we're not going to use this, we're going to use one of the other ones, Boyle's Law, Charles's Law, Avogadro's Law, who knows, let's see. Temperature is mentioned here. And then it says changing to what temperature? So temperature changes. I'll circle that to remind myself that temperature changes. Let's see, a pressure, it says originally a pressure of 220 kPa decreased to standard pressure. You need to know that standard pressure is one atmosphere, which in kPa is 101.3 kPa. So it changes the pressure as well. Change in temperature, change in pressure. Well, the only thing that deals with change in temperature and change in pressure is this law. P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. Okay, that's like, yeah, that's either Sachs law or something like that. I'm probably saying the name wrong, but not that you need to know the names of these laws, just make sure you know the equation itself. That's the important part. Okay, so you would use this equation to solve it, and since it is asking you what temperature it will change to, means you're going to be solving for T2, and then you'd rearrange to get T2 by itself, 
and plug in numbers and solve. Uh, the topic of how to rearrange these is a topic for another video. Let's look at the other uh, questions and see what sort of equations would be best to use for these. So, um, for this next one, once again, I see, do any, does anything change in here? Yeah, we got changing. Something's changing here. Standard pressure, that's not standard pressure. Volume, what is the volume of the sample? It mentions the volume up here, okay. So I can tell right now volume is going to change because it's asking what's the volume of the sample that implying that this is it's going to be something other than this. Gas is a pressure of 76.7 kPa. What is the volume of the standard of the sample at standard pressure? Remember, STP, standard pressure and temperature. Standard pressure is one atmosphere, or since it's kPa, that's 101.3 kPa. If it was talking about standard pressure, it's not here, but standard pressure... Or sorry, if it's not, if it was talking about standard temperature, um, that'd be zero degrees Celsius, but it doesn't mention standard temperature here. It says no temperature change, which of course means that temperature is not going to be part of the calculation. So in these questions where some factors change and other factors don't, you ignore the ones that don't. Only pay attention to the ones that do. So volume changes, pressure changes. So what involves volume changing and pressure changing? P1, V1 equals P2, V2. What's the volume of the sample of standard pressure? So that sounds like your final volume right there is what you'd be solving for. Okay, looking at the next ones. Let's get some more up into view here. You know, keep it like that so you can look at the previous question if you like. Um, okay, what do I use here? I've got a temperature change, final volume. So I've got a volume and a final volume. It says it's cooled at standard pressure, but it doesn't say anything about a change in pressure. So I'm assuming pressure is constant and not changing, which means I can ignore it for the purposes of this calculation. So I'm just going to pay attention to volume and temperature changing. So what involves volume and temperature changing? Well, V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. Okay, and what's the final volume? That means you're going to be solving for that. Okay, next question. 15 liters sample of oxygen gas collected at a temperature of negative 43 degrees Celsius and a pressure of 50.7 kilopascals. Calculate the volume at STP. Standard temperature and pressure. Standard temperature is zero degrees Celsius. Standard pressure is one atmosphere, but since we're talking kPa, that's 101.3 kPa. Yes, when you are doing these sorts of calculations where things change, you need to be consistent with your units. So kPa means you've got to keep on using kPa. Um, you'll definitely, when you calculate these, you must convert to Kelvin. Never, ever put a degree Celsius into a gas equation. But at any rate, temperature changes, pressure changes, volume changes. So volume changes, pressure changes, temperature changes. What involves volume, temperature, and pressure changing? That is the combined gas law. P1, V1 over T1 equals P2, V2 over T2. It's the only one that takes into account all the changing variables. Okay, moving ahead. Okay, for here, what do we choose for this one? All right, what I see here is uh, number of moles and different number of moles. So number of moles is changing. It's a temperature 25 degrees Celsius. It mentions temperature again, but it's the same temperature. Temperature not changing. I'm going to ignore it. So I'll even scribble it out to remind myself I'm going to ignore the temperature thing because it's not changing, whereas other things are. Okay, if I volume of 53.4 liters, what would be the volume of this other thing? So volume changing. So moles changes, volume changes. That's V1 over N1 equals V2 over N2. And you would solve for this one. Again, we ignore the temperature thing because the temperature is not changing. If some things are changing but other things aren't, you ignore the ones that are not changing. All right, next, que next question. 
All right. First of all, is anything changing? I see moles. There's nothing here about moles changing. Um, pressure. It does say at standard conditions. Well, what are standard conditions? That is zero degrees Celsius. So temperature is not changing. It's standard. Pressure. Standard pressure is 760 millimeters of mercury because I use the same unit as here. And, okay, so in other words, pressure, volume, moles are not changing. There's volume changing. It's asking for volume, but it doesn't give a volume anymore, so volume's not changing either. Nothing's changing. Okay, that means there's none, be, there's none of this V1, V2, P1, P2, T1, T2 business. No, so it means you're going to you, well, you could use PV equals NRT. It would totally work. You could use it. N is given to you on a table like this on, on your um, test and quiz. You can rearrange this to solve for volume. So volume is NRT over P. And then you plug everything in and it would work. Just making sure to turn this into Kelvin. It would work. However, there's a shortcut. Because this everything here is both not changing and it's all at standard conditions, you can take advantage of, at STP, one mole of any gas is 22.4 liters. Which means I could solve this one by just taking 64.8 moles times 22.4 liters per one mole and that would equal out to, uh, let's see, what would that come out to? 64.8 times 22.4 1,451.5 three sig figs, three sig figs we'll call it three significant figures which is why it one, this is equivalent to 1,450 and three sig figs One point four five times ten to the third liters. Okay, so you could use this, totally could use PV equals NRT, but it's a little bit of a longer process because instead of just this, you now have to rearrange, plug all the numbers in, choose the correct value of R, calculate all that on your calculator, and then you will get the same answer, but it'll just take you a little longer. So if you can use this little thing right here, if your conditions are standard, standard pressure, standard temperature, then by all means use it to speed up your calculations and get you through the exam faster so you can answer more questions and get a better score. Okay, next question. Okay, here. New temperature, okay, that tells me something's changing, which means I can't use PV equals NRT. Okay, so temperature is changing liters. Okay, I see a change in volume. So volume is changing. So we have temperature, we've got volume. Pressure is mentioned, but notice how pressure is the same. We're going to ignore it because it's staying the same while everything else is changing, while other things are changing anyway. So temperature and volume. Well, what involves temperature and volume? The only thing that's going to allow me to do calculations of temperature and volume is Charles's law, which is uh, V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. Okay, and then what's the new temperature? You're going to be solving for this guy. Okay, next, here. Nothing's changing. There's no mention of any changes of any kind. It's just pressure, temperature, volume, moles, but there's no mention of anything changing. That means PV equals NRT that will work. Now can I use the STP thing? After all, at STP it's faster calculation. Problem is, that's not standard pressure. That's a really small number of torr. It's not 760 and that's not standard temperature. So I cannot use the STP thing, which means I have to use this. Which means solve for N, N equals PV over RT, and then plug in the numbers and you got it. Okay. Let's look at the next one. First of all, is anything changing here? OK. 
Temperature remains constant. Pressure is changing. So pressure needs to be in the equation. 2.5 liters occupy what volume? So the volume is going to change. Volume and pressure. That's it. That's the only thing that changes. Temperature remains constant. Now it doesn't affect the outcome. Okay, volume and pressure. The only equation is P1 V1 equals P2 V2. That's Boyle's law. Not that you need to know that for the test, but okay, this is the equation that would allow you to solve this, right? And then you occupy what volume at the end to solve for this variable. And I suppose I should mark it here. Uh, this variable to which is solved for. Anyway, the last question here. Let's choose the correct equation here. Um, let's see. This is volume. It's asking what volume is occupied. So it's asking you to solve for volume, which means it must be different than this, which means you must be solving for volume. Volume must be changing. 22 degrees, 636 torr. Find the volume occupied by the dry gas at STV. Standard temperature is 0 degrees Celsius. And standard pressure, let's see, we'll do it in torr, 760 torr, 1 atmosphere. Okay, so clearly pressure changes, clearly temperature changes. So volume, temperature, and pressure are all changing. P1, V1 over T1 equals P2, V2 over T2, the combined gas law. And then you would see what are you looking for find the volume occupied by the dry gas so you're going to solve for volume 2 where 273 kelvin goes here and 760 torr goes here and then these other numbers or this converted to kelvin i should say plus these other numbers go over here all right so that should give a nice little overview of how to choose the correct formula or rather the correct equation for each of these different kinds of questions Okay, highly recommended to go back, review the video again, practice with this and with other questions that you have done in the homework and in the notes. Cover up the answers and practice choosing the correct equation. And then, of course, rearranging the equation and solving it also would be a good practice. Alrighty then, happy studies.